BJ Pro AI was able to fit so many amazing features into their app by using these different view modes. And although I would recommend using pro mode because you could do the most in one screen, there are still some great features that you could do in classic mode. So when you first start the app, you are going to be in what the app calls classic mode. In order to change these different view modes, we're going to press this middle button over here. And then we have all of our different view modes, Pro, Looper, Automix, One Deck, Four Deck. And if you watched my videos before, you would know I recommend Pro Mode, but I just wanted to show you some of the reasons why Classic Mode is better. Now, the first reason that Classic Mode is better than Pro Mode is because of the jog wheels. So they give us these imitation record decks. So these are programmed to perform just like if you were using a real turntable and a mixer. So everything on this is active. So this arm, you can scrub through the track with it and it acts just like a job wheel or just like a real record deck. Out of any DJ app for the iPad or any touchscreen, these jog wheels are the most realistic and the best in my opinion. I have downloaded every single DJ app. Now, if you are planning on scratching or doing turntable techniques with just the iPad, then classic mode is going to be better for you because you get more surface area on the jog wheel. So with bigger controllers, you get bigger jog wheels and you have more control. The smaller the jog wheel, the less control that you're going to have. In classic mode, on my iPad Pro, it measures right around three inches around for the jog wheel. And then now if we go into pro mode, we get these jog wheels here, which are great and have information on them, but they come to about an inch. So in pro mode, in pro mode, we lose about two inches off the jog wheel and it can make a huge difference in trying to scratch just using the iPad. It's really hard to do with the small jog wheel in pro mode. And now there's another hidden feature on these record decks that I use for one specific reason, one specific transition. And that's if I am going to go from a large BPM to a small BPM. But in order to do this, all you have to do is press this button down here. It's kind of hidden and you could only see it if you don't have any of these open up here, which I will explain after. All you do is let the track play, press this button, And then it will slowly wind down, kind of like if you pull the plug out of a fan, it'll slowly stop spinning and it makes a really cool sound so you could go to a lower BPM. So that can only be done in this view mode in pro mode. Another thing that's great in classic mode is that we have a really big and really easy way to control your BPM. So if you're planning on DJing like old school style, like how you used to do it on turntables and a mixer with your BPM slider right there, this will be very comfortable and it's very fun to DJ. Now, where we start to lose features compared to pro mode is going to be once we open up the effects and the loops and neuromix section. So to do that, we're gonna press this button over here on the right. And now we have big access to our features, but what we lose is a jog wheel. So you can't be using the effects while you're scratching or while you're using the jog wheel because this square goes over where your jog wheel was. But then again, you do get your biggest views of your effects if we're in pro mode and we go to effects they're much smaller over here. So just keep that in mind. You're not going to be able to use any of these features while you're using the jog wheel. We do have access to a loop here. So you could do a loop here and then you could do a limited version of Neuromix where it's just on and off. So you still, you still get some features, but if you wanted to go into your cue points, if you wanted to start doing the slicer or pitch cue, then you are going to lose your jog wheel. It may not be a big deal if you're not a big jog wheel DJ and you go more by the waveforms and other ways, then it won't bother you. But if you like to have access to your jog wheels at 24 seven, then you you might not like using this mode all the time. Now here is where it gets interesting. So if we press this button over here, we get to see our waveforms. So we get a big view, vertical view of our waveforms, which a lot of people appreciate. They're very big, so we can access our jog wheel and our waveforms at the same time. This is what I like to use on because I feel like I need the waveforms there to help me. But some DJs are different. If you're used to using other softwares where you're used to seeing the waveforms, then you could do that. 
Also, the waveforms act like a job wheel. They are active and you could move them and scratch that way if you wanted to. So we have our full access to our waveforms. Now, this button over here to the left is our mixer section. So now we got volumes, filters. These are the gain control. We have our levels here. But the genius thing they were able to do was put this button, EQ. So now we have a view of our jog wheel. We have our lows, mids, and highs, filter, and volume slider. And you can even switch this to be a neuro mix mixer if that's how you like the mix. I personally like to keep it in the regular equalizer. And you still get this same thing in pro mode. The bottom is the same. It's just a little bit smaller. And then in classic mode, it's bigger. You get to see these big jog wheels. But again, we don't get to see our waveforms moving at all. So if you're a waveform DJ, stay away from classic mode because it might be difficult because now you don't have your volume control and you don't have a lot of stuff that you need. And it's hard when you're DJing to go from one screen, switch over here, change the volume, switch over here, go to the waveforms. So that's why I usually recommend pro mode, but classic mode is better if you like doing turntablism and stuff like that. You have access to your looper and your sampler, but it is very limited. You only get eight different pads and then the looper is the same way. It's kind of hard to use. Do not plan on using the looper to make beats and stuff in classic mode. Do it in pro mode or do it in the dedicated looper mode. So it really depends on your style of DJing. If you're a scratch hip hop type of turntablist DJ and you want to get that experience and have that fun on the iPad, then classic mode is going to be a lot of fun. But if you want more of an EDM, technical, techno DJ or something like that, then you're going to want to use promo. So watch this video over here where I tell you all about promo.